Anytime is tea time, you can press on my buttons at 4 o'clock in the morning and say we've got information. The job goes on. in South Africa are defending their killing of 34 miners yesterday. Video of the incident has shocked people around the world. South Africa's worst incident of police brutality since the apartheid era. South Africa to pairs justice is on the way for the family of Nigerian man Ibuka Okuli, who was killed last year. A 24-year-old South African police constable, Austin Reynold, has been found guilty for his murder in Durban, Kuala Zulu, NATO. Make sure you leave the house on good terms. You greeted everybody nicely. One thing I don't like is my family must walk me out when I'm going to work because it feels as if they are taking me out the last time. Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel and thank you for joining me here again today. So unfortunately, by looking at that, if you live in South Africa, you either have a love-hate relationship with the South African police force. I often think that the police are given a bad rap most of the time. But then again, when you really need the police, sometimes they are not always around and that's where you get the negativity of the whole South African police service from. So today's case is taking us on a slightly different path. And if you watched last week's video of Carl Dalport, we spoke about a rampage murder. And in that story, I told you that there would probably be more that we uncover. So after last week's video, I kind of went down the rabbit hole and I started digging and found another rampage killer in South Africa. And this type of killer, if I even dare say it, is probably one of the worst types of killers because this man was trusted by the South African public to serve and protect because he was a detective in the South African police force. Now, I just do want to give a disclaimer that there was not a lot of information about this particular serial killer's upbringing, so we'll just have to work with what we have. But without any more rambling from me, let's get into it. Intended for mature audiences only. David Chippa Matiane was born in 1963 in South Africa. David was said to be an incredibly helpful man. He often helped a lot in his community, but some people also saw him as quite a loner, so he would sometimes sit by himself, but if anybody needed a helping hand, David was the first person there. David Matiane also seemed to have it all. He was a detective in the South African police force, and he was slowly but surely building up his career within the police force, and just before this whole rampage went on, he was actually promoted to superintendent. And at this stage, he was 44 years old. David also had a long-term girlfriend named Poppy, which is a lovely name. But his girlfriend's name was Poppy, and they lived together for quite a while. I think they were dating between 8 and 10 years. David and Poppy lived on a small holding with Poppy's family. So Poppy had her own house, and she owned this entire small holding. But they had a house here. And then her other family would live on smaller properties within the same plot. This plot of land was in West Rand, and David and Poppy lived together with Poppy's daughter, who was 24 years old at the time, and her daughter had a son who was around 18 months old, and they all stayed in Poppy's house. And like I said, Poppy owned this plot of land because she was a very successful businesswoman. She owned her own salon and she was a hairdresser and a beautician within the salon that she owned. So like I said, David and Poppy were dating for quite a while. And a lot of people, especially outsiders looking into their relationship, said that David had a very, very jealous streak on him. David kind of had the attitude where if Poppy left him, then no one else could have her. And that was his kind of view of Poppy, that he was hers and she was his and that was it. So because of David's controlling behavior, this led to a lot of fights with the couple and they often were in screaming matches through the phone and just shouting at each other all the time. And one of the other main reasons for Poppy and David's fighting was that David really believed that Poppy was having an affair with so many of the police officers at the police station that David worked at. 
And like I said, they would have screaming matches through their cell phones while they were both at work. And this was no different on April 3rd, 2006. David was busy screaming on the phone at the police station and Poppy was screaming on the phone at her beauty salon and they were just going at each other. And David's colleagues would often say that David and Poppy would fight about trivial things that would just escalate. So then at around half past six on the 3rd of April 2006, after David got home from his long shift at the police station, he then walks into the home that Poppy owned, which remember they stayed together. But he walks into the home and he continues the argument with Poppy in the bedroom, while Poppy's daughter and her grandson is in the bedroom next door. The argument escalates and eventually David is like, you know what, fine. He walks out of the bedroom that him and Poppy share, then he goes into the garage or somewhere out of the house. He then walks back into the bedroom. He then opens fire on Poppy, killing her instantly. He then walks over to Poppy's daughter, who is actually named Lorato, and he walks into Lorato's room. He then opens fire on her killing her, and he then opens fire on Poppy's grandson, Lorato's son, killing him as well. And remember, Lorato's son was only 18 months old at the time. Now, at the time, there were reports that Poppy's niece was also in the house at the time, and it was either that she was already in the house, or she had heard the gunshots and had come running into the house. Because at some point, Poppy's niece was also shot, but she was shot quite critically, but she was not murdered. She was just very badly wounded. But because Poppy's niece saw what David was doing, she kind of just played possum, played dead, and she just lay there until he went away. So David has now shot and murdered Poppy, Lorato, and Lorato's son. He also shot and very significantly wounded Poppy's niece. So David kind of walks over the bodies. He's having a look at all of them. And then he walks to the PC, which is in his house. And he starts typing up a letter and the letter says, quote, I am not to blame. I am important. I deserve to be loved by you. I deserve to be treated with respect and I will still love you forever. End quote. David then took a photo of a little panda bear and he stuck it on the side of this letter. He then printed out the letter and put it near Poppy's body. Police then said when they entered the home that there were wooden doors that connected to the bedrooms and these wooden doors were shot straight through. They were completely broken because that's how many bullet holes went through the doors. The sliding door in Poppy's house was also completely shattered and there were also bullet holes all over the floor tiles within the house. Now I remember I said that the niece of Poppy was wounded but she hadn't been murdered by David. So like I said, she was playing possum and then when David left the house, she then rolled over and she kind of like felt for a phone because she knew there was a phone near her and she picked up the phone and it was Poppy's phone. She picked it up and she looked through the contacts and she found a contact for one of their really close friends named John Amanda. She then dials John Amanda and says, quote, Chipper has shot everyone in the house. Chipper was a nickname that they would call David at the police station and it kind of just stuck throughout. So John Amanda gets into his car. He then races over to Poppy's house to actually see what happened. At first, he was unable to get into the house. And when he looked through the window, he thought that Poppy was still alive. But eventually he made his way around and he saw that the sliding door was broken. He then entered the house and he saw that Poppy, Lorato and Lorato's son had passed away. And then he found eventually Poppy's niece. He then rushed Poppy's niece to Laratong Hospital, and that's where she made a full recovery. So kind of simultaneously, while John was driving Poppy's niece to the hospital, David was not done with his rampage yet. David now drives to the police station that he worked at, which is in Krugersdorf, and he walked into the police station, and he kind of walked into the office that housed four of the most senior police officers. And he walks in, he greets, he's like, hello, hello takes out his gun and shoots all four senior police officers dead. David then turns around, books it for the back door, but before leaving the police station, he grabs an old police van's keys and he then hops into the van and he then takes this van for a joyride, basically. While he's busy driving this police van around, he calls his brother and asks his brother to meet him. So David and his brother decide on a meeting point and his brother waits for David there. David eventually rocks up and he sees his brother. He then slowly walks up to his brother, acting normal, and then he pulls out a gun and opens fire on his brother as well. Luckily, his brother is unfortunately severely wounded, but he does eventually make a full recovery. 
but David's brother's recovery was incredibly long and incredibly painful because David just, like I said, opened fire. There wasn't only one or two bullets in David's brother's body, so he was quite badly injured when he went to the hospital and he was in ICU for a couple months. So if we go back to the police station that David had just rampaged through, the police were obviously, that were still alive, were very, very shocked and surprised because everyone there got on really well with David. Yes, he may have been a loner at some times, but like I said, he was always helpful and he was kind of a senior authority around the police station. So people looked up to him as well. And David shooting the four most senior officers within the police station took a large toll on many of the police officers there because a lot of the police officers said that these four men were kind of like father figures to a lot of them, especially the young recruits. So the police who were actually still in the police station then all got into their vans and they eventually tracked the police van down that David stole and they eventually caught up with him. This then ended up in a very high speed chase with David and a lot of police cars. And unfortunately, one of the police cars that was chasing David ended up hitting a pedestrian and this pedestrian unfortunately didn't make it. So not the greatest look on the police, but unfortunately, yeah, I don't know. So while the police and David were still chasing, eventually David stopped on like one of the off ramps on the N1 and he got out of the car and he tried to make a getaway into the forest near the N1. And this was around 10 p.m. at night. So David, I assume, thought that he could hide within this forest off the freeway. But because the actual police officers were still in these big vehicles, and we often have big police vans that are made of like buckies or big cars. So they were able to kind of off-road for a little bit and they eventually caught up with David. The policemen then got out of their vehicles and David now could see them running towards him. He hid behind some trees and eventually there was a shoot-off between police and David. David did end up injuring two more police officers and they had to be taken to hospital for their injuries, but they did survive. And David was then shot and killed on scene by other policemen who were defending themselves. And that is the case of David Chipper Matiane. And I mean, another rampage that is just so ridiculous and so unjustified. And I mean, be because it was all taken out of an act of jealousy that was never proven. There was no proof in David's mind that Poppy had ever been unfaithful to him so it was all made up in his mind and he took this act of jealousy and just acted on it and went through a complete rain rampage through the streets of Krugerthal. This is an incredibly sad and tragic case because obviously I do feel bad for all of the victims in this case but especially the 18 month child baby I just think that it was unnecessary for David but like I said all the time all crimes are unnecessary which give me. So like I said that is the case of David Chipper Matiane. Let me know what you think of it down below. Stay safe, don't talk to strangers, and I'll see you again next week. Bye.